who is ready to make some primary amines? Hey gang, and welcome back for another video here on JoeChem. Okay gang, so this video is all about the production of primary amines, particularly through the method what that is called the Gabriel synthesis. So there's a video on JoeChem already. It's part zero, if you will, of the Gabriel synthesis. It's a nice intro. It doesn't really, you know, touch on the actual core reaction. In fact, all it is really is a practicing of a double addition elimination where you create this very important diamid called thalamid or thalamide potato potato. I'm going to say thalamid. Now, thalamid, super helpful reagent. It's very widely available and inexpensive to purchase, right? So in real life, this is a very practical way of producing primary means and circumventing that problem we saw with over-alkylation, with exhaustive alkylation of amines, right? If you start with ammonia, if you do SN2, you're probably not just going to get it to go the one time. You're going to actually do SN2 as many times as you can to produce and end up producing uh, right, an ammonium salt. So this is one method of making primary amines. So I want, what I want to do in this video is explain generally how this works. Then I want to show you mechanistically how this all goes down. And then at the very end, which I promise will take a long time, and is very similar to that mechanism where we produce um, thalamate itself. And then at the very end, we can do kind of like a complete the reaction and maybe provide the reagent type question just to get a little bit of practice in with this Gabriel synthesis. Okay, so if we take a look right here, thalamid. What is great about it, you know, since it is a diamid, thalamid is extremely, or more acidic than your typical um, amine or anything like that. This nitrogen, it is, uh, this hydrogen is very, uh, this proton is very likely to leave. And the reason being, if we have something like, you know, potassium hydroxide or any decent base around, we'll do this, is that when that proton is ab uh, uh, you know, picked off, we have a negative charge left over on this nitrogen that is very easily stabilized by resonance, right? You can see we have resonance up here, but we also have resonance down there. So very uh, you know, compelling reasons for this proton to get picked off, producing that negative charge. It's resonance stabilized, it's all good. So let me erase these arrows. Now, what is great about you know the ability to take that proton off is you can make a negative charge on that nitrogen, producing a more nucleophilic nitrogen. So what you can do at that point is you can toss in a primary a primary alkyl you know halide or something with a good leaving group, for example. But here maybe you're envisioning something like uh, ethyl iodide or something like that, ethyl bromide, whatever. This can then do SN two on that primary, um, you know, carbon, whatever, you know, attacking it, kicking off its good leaving group. That's a great way to then, you know, create a nitrogen carbon bond. And then what you can do is you can throw in um, NH2, NH2, that very nice reagent we saw with the wolf kishner reaction that helped us uh, reduce carbonyls. That will help us unravel this diamid, um, you know, with this nitrogen, it'll actually liberate this nitrogen right there. You'll get your primary amine and then you'll produce this compound right there. So what I want to do is actually show you this in action, show you the mechanism. I promise you it's not that bad. If you've already seen the first Gabriel synthesis video, then you're, you, you pretty much already know this, just a little bit of, uh, you know, an extra twist, an extra turn. So let me wipe this up. We'll do the mechanism. We'll do some complete the reactions. And then you will be a certified Gabriel synthesis expert. Okay, gang, so I want to jump into this reaction right here, showing you how to actually perform mechanistically a Gabriel synthesis. And right, what you can see is we're going to first deprotonate the nitrogen in thalamid, we're going to attack that primary carbon in ethyl iodide, and then we're going to liberate that, you know, and produce our primary amine, and then have that cyclic uh, byproduct. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and to save myself some space, I'm going to just show you kind of the acid base step of the deprotonation of, whoops, thalamid right here. That should be a hydrogen. So I'm just going to show potassium hydroxide is a very um, typical culprit used in this acid base reaction right here. It's it's as strong as you need it. This is you know very acidic hydrogen. So you know as a first step, right down here, you can expect to have 
this thalamid salt, right? We'll have, and people, I know I generally don't use spectator ions in my video, but this is one case where it's usually drawn like this, so I'm gonna draw it like that too. And more often than not, you might just be handed this. This is a very uh, readily you know, available thing to buy in real life and to have on, you know, on the shelf in a lab. So um, you don't always have to have this first step, but I'm gonna include it here. So from there on out, now we have this nitrogen that is nucleophilic and ready to do some attack. So what we can do is we can bring, you know, that's step one, put a little check mark there. Now we bring in the ethyl iodide or whatever, you know, uh, substrate you have to attack. So the nitrogen will go ahead and attack that primary carbon. We will boot off our leaving group with, that, which here is iodide, very good, weak base, stable. We know the drill. So after doing that, then you have created what is the beginning of your primary amine. So now we have the nitrogen in here. We have this, you see the ethyl now is attached to our nitrogen. This is the piece we will liberate. That is what becomes the NH2 right there. Of course, and you know, now we have potassium iodide kind of hanging out with each other up here. That's okay. Uh, but now how do we break that out? How do we do that? Well, this is where hydrazine, right? N2H4, NH2, NH2 is gonna help us out, right? So what we can do is we can bring in the hydrazine. And if you've seen the video where I show you how to make thalamid, then this is exactly that. It's just a lot of steps. It's an attack. You know, it's addition elimination with a lot of acid-base reactions mixed in. So what we can do is we can attack this carbonyl carbon and kick electrons up. Now, you don't have to you know, start with the top one, I'm gonna start with the top one, but if you start with the bottom one, that works just as well. So, we go ahead, and what I'm gonna say is, you usually don't have to show this step, but I wanna show you it. It's good, it's good practice, in my opinion. So, once we attack there, what we have is O minus, then we have our ring left intact down here, but then what we're also gonna have is now the hydrazine attached, when things are gonna get a little crowded, so I apologize for that. So we have the NH2 right there. We have two hydrogens right here and a plus charge on that nitrogen. Now here's something that's very key. And I'm sorry, I'll do a little bit better of redrawing that the next time. You can see that on this ring, we keep, you know, the, the hydrogen is added and we boot off what is the makings of our primary mean. So we want to protonate the things we want to kick off and get rid of, and we want to deprotonate what we want to stick around. So I want to deprotonate this nitrogen right here. So what I can do is I'm going to just have an intramolecular acid-base reaction. So I'm going to have this nitrogen grab a proton. You know what I'll do? I'll put this over here. There we go. I'll have this nitrogen grab a proton off of the one nitrogen that came from hydrazine, and that will dump electrons onto that nitrogen. So we are effectively trading the positive charge from this nitrogen to that nitrogen. So if I go ahead and draw the result of that step, I think you'll see what we're able to accomplish with that. I still have the O minus. It is just hanging up there, chilling, waiting to reform the carbonyl and swing its electrons down. But now we have a nitrogen. I'm just gonna draw the hydrogen uh, squeezed up on it. The NH2 I'll draw right here. Then we have the rest of our ring. Nitrogen with the ethyl, but now a hydrogen, so it has a plus charge, because it is a nitrogen with four bonds, plus one formal charge. Now, so this was the addition part of an addition elimination mechanism. Now we're actually going to eliminate. So I'll swing these electrons down. I'm gonna reform that carbonyl carbon, but I need to eject something. I need to get rid of something. And now this is primed and much better as a leaving group to actually take the electrons and run, okay? So we're really just breaking this bond right here, which is good because that's one step closer to actually kicking this off as a whole. So as a result, what does that look like? Now we have just this right here, right? Oh, and hydrogen, NH, NH2, right? Kind of just this amide unit that's new. And then now we have this bottom, you know, amide right here. So we no longer have a full cyclic ring. We have something like this going on. Let's do the whole process again. What I'm gonna have this nitrogen do is attack the other carbonyl carbon like this because I know that I need to have the hydrazine form a ring. 
So I need this nitrogen to close the loop on that. And then I'll kick electrons up like that. So drawing this arrow over here, what we have going on, nothing changes so much on the top so that, uh, you know, it really just that we're kind of conforming to this new ring that we're forming. So now I have nitrogen down here with two hydrogens. I have this, the, the, you know, what was the carbonyl carbon? It has an O minus now, right? This carbon right here is this carbon right here. O minus, uh, you know, electrons got kicked up. And then I now have this, you know, I still have that nitrogen with the ethyl, with the hydrogen and a lone pair. So very close, right, to being that liberated primary amine. And I do have a positive charge right here. So same deal. I want this to go. I want this to stay. So I'm going to do a convenient intramolecular acid base reaction, which means I'll put the positive charge on what is just about to be my primary amine. So we have this up here, nitrogen, hydrogen, nitrogen, just the one hydrogen now, right? We have O minus, and then we have the nitrogen, the ethyl, and then the two hydrogens and a plus charge. Now, that was the addition part of our addition elimination. I'll swing these electrons down. I'll need to boot off a leaving group, and here's where I finally get to do it. I kick off that leaving group, and here's where we finish our mechanism gang. We produce this you know, product. You're always gonna produce when you finish off your Gabriel synthesis with hydrazine. So that's not that much important. What's important is you made this, whatever this you know group you attached at the beginning, that's what you made. So here we get ethyl amine, and that is mechanistically how the Gabriel synthesis works. And I would say if you ever need to do this, you know, uh, mechanistically, I would be prepared to do all of this. But it, you know, if you if you did your pager dues during you know addition elimination. Uh, mechanism time, right, when you learned all those carboxylic acid derivatives, it's nothing new. It's just the same addition elimination me mechanism twice. Whew. Okay, gang, so let me clean this up. I want to just, you know, show you a complete the reaction where you have a Gabriel, sy Gabriel synthesis and you need to predict the amine product and then maybe show you an amine product and say this was made via a Gabriel synthesis and have you, you know, pick out the reactant or a reactant that would fit that bill. So thanks for sticking with me. Let's just we'll clean this up. Two more quick little problems and this video is over. Okay gang, to finish out this video, I just have two quick examples where first we're going to predict the product in this Gabriel synthesis, Gabriel synthesis reaction. And down here, given the Gabriel synthesis product, we need to come up with um, some starting material that will help this reaction go as it is uh, displayed. So right here, when you see a Gabriel synthesis you know, at least with, in this format, right? We've been given the thalamid salt. So we already have thalamid deprotonated. So you can see this is our primary amine, right? This is the thing we're going to attack via SN2, right? And if you're also wondering like the Gabriel synthesis done with primary amines because, uh, you know, good SN2 sterics, right? Very sterically available. That's what you'll do this with. So when you see this, what I kind of want you to think is you know, you see a good leaving group, you're just gonna be sticking an amine right here, okay? You know that the hydrazine is gonna help clean you up and produce that very characteristic cyclic product that you always form. So really what you're doing is just taking where you have your good leaving group and just tacking on a night, you know, an NH2 versus a bromine or whatever your leaving group might be. It's that simple, okay? And then now down here, when you see this, right, you're given the thalamid salt and the hydrazine, and then you see the amine product. So what's your starting material? Well, very in, you know, kind of the inverse thinking as you know, you saw up here. You know that you produced this primary amine. Well, you must have had some primary carbon with a good leaving group. So it's very similar. Take the NH, the NH2, and just swap it out for some good leaving group. So it's as simple as saying, oh, okay, well, I had this organic structure right here. And I don't know, pick your favorite leaving group. Maybe it's a bromine type of day, maybe it's a chlorine type of day, or an iodine, or you know, tosylate group, whatever you feel like. Okay, gang, it's that is the Gabriel synthesis in all of its majesty. Um, if you are looking, you know, if the maybe the addition elimination mechanism, uh, I highly recommend working that out. It only builds your mechanistic uh, fundamentals. Check out the video where I show you 
kind of the precursor to the Gabriel synthesis where I show you how um, with ammonia uh, you can make and, and a dye, you know, a dye carboxylic acid, you can make thalamid. Um, I, again, if anything, it practices those mechanistic fundamentals. So, uh, you know, make sure to link that in this, the description below. If you're watching this video, make sure to check out my actual website if you're on, if you're here on YouTube. Uh, you know, jochem.io. I have worksheets that pair with all the videos to give you direct practice right after you watch these videos. And the answers and those worksheets are 100% free. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video.